it's another crowd-pleasing software title on Chinivision. Yes, people are tuning out right about now, even if they clicked on this in the first place, because today we're going to look at a typing game from Amstrad Computer User. We haven't done a typing game for quite a while. And as I've mentioned on this channel before, Amstrad Computer User used to have these rather large typings as a result of the Amsoft £2,000 software competition, where Amstrad would give away £2,000 or sometimes split it between different people for user submitted type-ins that either were published in Amstrad Computer User or published by Amsoft. Splatch is one of those titles. The author, Mark Roberts, won £500 for this typing game that was spread over two issues. And yes, there are a lot of data statements and some complicated instructions in order type the game in and type all the different modules for the game in. It recommends something like eight cassettes and both sides of a floppy disk if you've got a floppy disk drive to save all the modules before you save out the final game. It's to save you losing all you've typed in, really. 118k free on the disk. That means the game takes about, oh, about 52k, something like that. On this version, you can see here, there are two versions of the game, a typing version and a version that you could actually buy from Amstrad Computer User. There's not much difference, but we will come to look at that. There's a high score table and some control options, joystick or keyboard. But what we want to do is get the game underway. And you are rabbit and you have to collect the carrots and acorns fall on your head. And it's Boulder Dash, isn't it really? It, it's a clone of Boulder Dash on a single screen as a type-in. Your rabbit's animation is, uh, well, it's non-existent. Animation overall is pretty much, well, non-existent. But it still looks pretty nice. Oh, I've got that wrong. You see, screen one, I've got it wrong. I've got carrot trapped and I need to get all the carrots. Now I'm trapped. Each screen is against the time limit, although I've turned the timer off here and I've also got infinite lives with a cheat. You can also start on a variety of the screens. There's approximately 30 screens in total. Again, on a type-in listing spread over two issues, an Amstrad Computer User, or you could buy it from Amstrad Computer User on a disc or tape for not a lot of money. Save you typing it all in. So the trick on this level is not to collect those carrots on the left. First of all, they are the last carrots because you will be trapped. It's fiendish. Splatch is very, very fiendish. It's like Boulder Dash. Or Repton, if you will. Oh yes, Repton. Sound effects are limited to things falling on falling, like the acorns and the soil kind of noise when you're digging. So off to screen B. Mark Roberts, who programmed this game, did, was listed for another game by Mirasoft, and that's about it as far as I can see. On the CPC, that is. CPC power, of course, might not be complete. Have I got this wrong? You do need to work it all out. I've got trapped, haven't I? That's what's happened now. I've got trapped. I do like the hardware scroll when the screen, uh, when you die and the screen vanishes or you get the, the level ends. That is legitimate hardware scrolling. Now we're really getting that boulder dash. We've got the butterfly things. And down there, we've got some squirrels that we're going to kill with this acorn. And then they turn into carrots. They turn into lots of carrots. Which hopefully means we don't need to get the rest of the carrots to complete the level. I counted them all as yet. It's a very playable game for a type-in. 
I have seen more polished graphics when I type in. Um, that Space Invaders clone I looked at on the 30 Years of the CPC video a number of years ago. Really good graphics on that game. But this isn't CPC's medium resolution mode. It's a little bit orange and green, but it's not too bad at all. I assume if you drop acorns on the the butterflies slash fireflies, whatever they are, they turn into carrots as Boulder Dash. I mean, there's nothing original here, but it's it's done nicely, and the puzzling here is absolutely fiendish. You really have to look at the screen and try and work out which way you're going to do it. And the difference in Boulder Dash is you can see the entire screen in one go, as opposed to wandering around, which actually I quite like, because of course with Boulder Dash it's very easy to get stuck at the end of a level, because you've done something in the wrong order. But actually seeing it all on screen, at least you've got a chance to figure it all out. Different screen. And they just get more fiendish as it goes along. You've just got to work out where the traps are. What can you get out of? I can get out of this because I can push the acorns. Which make a satisfying clunking noises. For this typing, really, you're not that far off a low-end commercial release on, on budget or at a lower price. We're not talking like death kick low, obviously, but lower end. Certainly in terms of playability, you're going to get some time out of this game, even if the graphical animation isn't exactly great. But of course, that the animation is going to make the typing even larger than it is. It's already spread across two issues. 50k of typing. Just imagine that. could drop that carrot on the butterfly, but I'm not going to. I'm trying to... No, that went wrong. Oh. Right, now I've got the butterfly thing trapped in the wrong place. I have to think about this. Oh, I've got some there, but I think I'm now horribly trapped, aren't I? It's fiendish. It is fiendish. I can't think of many typing games that are quite this um, this kind of puzzling element. Okay, again, I keep saying it. It's Boulder Dash. There is nothing original here. But it's the way these puzzles are thought out. They're all eminently solvable. But you're going to have to work it out. I'm going to be dead. I'm dead. I'm X Rabbit. This is what the game looks like if you buy it. You get a different title screen and you get a font. Yes, it's another system font. They've actually put in a special font, which I actually think takes away from the, the game. I think it looks quite nice with the CPC system font. This font don't really like as much at all. Splash is a game I remember playing quite a lot. It was on one of the discs that my dad's mate David gave us on Christmas Day. 985, so we had some CPC software to play on the day. And kudos to him because he typed it all in and got it right. But then again, I had so many of his typing games from various Amstrad publications that I also enjoyed playing. Today, well, clearly you're going to go off and play Boulder Dash on the C64 or the Atari 8 bit, or even that superb BBC Micro version. Or you're going to play Repton if you're, that's your bag, if you're into that. You're not going to play this, but I think this is a really interesting game from a historical point of view, just to show type-ins don't have to be absolutely rubbish things with user-defined graphics from the character set going around the screen. You can have properly defined graphics, you can have a splash of colour. Okay, there's not much animation, but you know that would make the thing even larger. And I think the puzzling on this game is extremely fiendish, and well thought out. It's a game I, I like. I do like it. In the grand scheme of things, it's just a typing game. 
but I think it's a typing game that, animation aside, is done really, really well.